Jaffa. Si. Gwat tos Talmud has to do with Judaism and with here everybody in Limud. Ah, oh, such a great question. So, so many people hear about the Talmud and they think, oh, it's too hard, it's too complicated, I don't know what that's about, it was written 2,000 years ago by a bunch of men who lived in Babylonia. What does it have to do with my life? And I think it's such a good and important question. And what people, I think, don't realize is that everything that we do in Judaism, everything that we do, is based on the rabbinic perspective. There are sources in the Bible, but so much of our practice and our custom comes from the Talmud. So the more that we can learn about it, the more that we can understand what's happening there, the more that people will feel connected, I think, to what Judaism is today. But I think also very important is to understand that the Talmud is not just law. It's conversations, it's questions, it's debates, it's stories. Right? We're going we're gonna to look at primarily today stories that the rabbis tell about themselves. How do they see themselves? How do they see their past? I think we think about rabbis today and we think, oh, there are these people who just think, think things and they're not connected to us. And slower. No, no, it's all right, it's all right. Okay, it. okay. Um, they think that rabbis are, are not connected, that they know all this law, but they're not, they're not connected to our lives, and they're so holy, and they're so perfect. And what the Talmud does is it tells us all of these stories about rabbis, where they look at themselves, they examine, they think, okay, where do we have problems? Where do we fall down? How, do we, how are we careful about our power? How are we careful about our decisions? Um, and I think it's very, very powerful to think about those things and learn about them today. What do you think the Talmud has been always be, like you said, written and studied by men, not by women. Oh. And don't tell me because women will, will always, when you discuss with a woman, she will always be right, so no problem. Yeah. But why do you think it's always has been yeah. studied by men, yeah. not by women? Yeah. So, you know, I have to say, you have to put the Talmud into historical context of the whole world. Really, we have to ask, why has the whole world only let men learn for thousands of years, right? Really only in the last hundred years, women started going to university, 100, 150 years, right? So it's really not about the Talmud or about Judaism. It's about the whole world. The whole world, thank God, is changing now. And women are starting to learn. They're starting to become doctors and lawyers. Well, they're not starting, but they're, they're doctors and they're lawyers and they're judges and they're the heads of schools and they're the heads of corporations. And, but really that whole revolution but is the, only- there are, many, there are not so many. You see a lot of doctors, you already see presidents of countries, we have a prime minister in yeah. Israel, but you don't see many women involved in religion, like, I don't know, they are not a priest, there are not many rabbis, ra rabbi, like you said, and why? Right. Well, I think that there are more than we think there are. In the reform and conservative movements, there have already been rabbis for 40, 30 years, there's already been women who have been taking the lead, and they're, they have huge congregations, and they have written, and they're And in the Orthodox community, um, we've already had women leaders for 20, 30 years. Um, and it really begins, the truth is, in terms of women's revolution of women's Torah study and women learning, already with Sarah Schneer, who was the founder of the Beit Yaakov movement. And, uh, and she already 120 years ago started schools for women. So it's not so new and it's a slow process. Like everywhere, it's a slow process and more and more women are taking up learning and taking up leading and it's very exciting we're in very exciting times you talk about also about if a woman can be a rabbi a rabbi like you say it, can it she be a rabbi how do people take it when you say i'm a rabbi because sorry you don't see like a rabbi more of it like many people have the impression of a rabbi because we always see what you have most of the time we see it in black it, it has a special image like when you see a policeman you see he's a policeman Right. How do a rabbi have to dress? How do people it's a good question. see you like a rabbi? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think it's different. It's true. It's different for women. And uh, I think in general, the image of what a rabbi looks like is starting to break down in general in the world. But uh, yeah, it's different. It's something new. We're going to have to see. We're in a new time. It's very exciting. Some people have problems with it, and that's totally legitimate. Some people think it's wonderful. The greatest thing I've seen, for me, the greatest place where I think it's making a difference is young Orthodox girls. 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, I meet them, and they're so excited to know that there is a place for them If they want to be leaders in the community, there is a place for them. That is the most exciting thing for me. I'm meeting these girls. When I was 16, I wanted to be this, but I didn't think it was possible. I didn't see women like me. Maybe there were, but I didn't know them. And they, weren't, they certainly weren't common. 
And now I see 16, 17 year old girls and they know that there is a place for them to go learn. They know that there is a community that will hire them. They know that they'll have jobs and it's very, very exciting. And who knows where it will lead? It will only lead, I think, to more Judaism, to more beauty, to more terror in the world. And how do you feel when you go to a place and they are going to make a minion and they say, all right, we need 10 men. Here are 10 men and say, uh, I'm a rabbi. Uh, we need 10 men. Yeah. It happens a lot of times. Sure, it happens. What's it happens. happens? What, what is in your mind when you see that and you say, but I'm a rabbi. I'm sure in your congregation when you think we need 10, 10 we need 10 people to make a minion. How do you see it when it's happened in other places? So I, I don't count myself in a minion. I don't, I don't count myself in a minion. So even if I had my own congregation, which I don't, I don't have a pulpit, but even if I did, I would require a minion of 10 men. Um, it's a That's great a question. <laughs> That's strange. You're a rabbi. You study yeah. Torah. You yeah. But you don't count yourself like right? a minion. Right. Because right now the halacha, the way the halacha understands, women don't count. The way that, sorry, I should say this careful, more carefully. The way that Orthodox halacha understands the law, women don't count in a minion right now. And uh, you need ten men. You need ten men. And I accept that. I accept the understanding and the binding of my of the halacha upon me. And so I accept it. I don't think it's always easy, but I accept it. And how do men in other countries, in other countries around in Israel, see you like a rabbi? Do they accept you? You live in Jerusalem, where is? I live in New York. Ah, you live in New York, which are yeah. from Jerusalem. How yeah. do people see you in, in like that? Do they consider? It? They take you seriously? I think you, people you teach Torah, they see you seriously. How do people? Yeah, definitely my students. And you know, it's what's, you know what's interesting, Isaac, is that a lot of my students, my male students are becoming Orthodox rabbis. And I think they take me seriously. I think some, some human, not just men, a lot of women also, a lot of men and women don't take women's ordination, women getting smicha seriously. And that's okay. It's a new thing. It's very hard. Uh, you know, everybody has to do what they think is right in Judaism. And uh, I'm more excited by what we can do than what we can't do. And what can we do? What's the importance to have women being a rabbi. I'm sure for women who, who are not rabbis, who are religious, it's important because they can follow somebody, but they can ask her different, like they ask a rabbi. But what's for you the importance that they will be yeah. women being a rabbi? So I think, I think it's, it's actually interesting because both men and women ask me questions, the same questions they would ask a man. So it's, it's not true that they ask me different questions. I get the same questions about kashrut and Shabbat. But you and have sexuality, you have couples, you have many things that, that maybe they won't ask you, but maybe some woman won't ask a rabbi. Right, it's true. You know what I think is more interesting is that there are people who wouldn't ask a rabbi anything, ever. Exactly. But when they meet me, or they're my friends, they do ask questions. So it's not that, you know, people think that women should be rabbis because, um, because they would ask women things they wouldn't ask men. But actually there are questions people won't ask that they'll ask me. And that I think is very, very exciting. And that's, I'm seeing that happen with younger people, with people that are my friends, people that know me, people that are looking for a Judaism that understands them in a different way. And I think that that's what we're building. And it's very just, exciting. Just to finish, what sure. do you think about being here in Mexico, being here at Limud? Yeah. What do you think about it's being here in Mexico? It's great. It's great. Being in Mexico has been amazing. I've loved every second of it. It's a, it's a wonderful community. They welcome me so warmly and uh, they've taken very good care of us. And it's beautiful to see the learning that's happening, to see different kinds of people coming together, different kinds of communities. Uh, it's very inspiring. I'm very honored to be here. Thank and, you. And Limud, what do you think about Limud? Limud is amazing. Limud is an amazing endeavor across the world and it's very beautiful to see it in Mexico also. And uh, I love seeing how each Limud is different and Limud Mexico has its own special flavor and it's really, it's really an honor to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you.